Okay, we're ready to go uh, with the kinetics unit. So here we go. We've got a kinetic reaction, and we are asked what is the overall order of reaction. So I think I can get rid of that for now. So remember these. Uh, I try to usually on an exam keep these pretty simple. We're going to look at these in pairs. Here we can see this is times 1. This one's times 2. And the reaction here is 0.46 and one point. Eight. So let me just see if I have a calculator here. Okay, so we're going to take the ratio of 1.84, divide that by 0.46, and we get four times. Okay, so that's good. It's usually going to be something like that. So that's four. So think about it as this is actually not two, this, or uh, whatever multiplication we do here, it's to the power of something. And that, uh, so it's, you know, to the power of n to give us 4. So if we have, if we have times 2 and it's to the power of some value and it equals 4, then what is x? x must be 2. So what is the overall rate of reaction? We're talking about rate is equal to k times ClO2 to the power of x times OH minus to the power of Y. And right now we figured out that X is equal to 2. Maybe I'm going to do it. We can do it this way. X equals 2. And so now we're going to look at the next one. Let's, I'm just going to clean up a little bit. Let's change colors. All right. So I'm going to try to keep my ClO2 constant. So that's times 1. And then this one here is oops, going this way times 2. So comparing here, we see times 2, 0.92 times 2 is 1.8. So that means that we have, for the green ones here, we have 2 to the power of y equals 2. So y must be 1. So I'm going to put that down here, y equals 1. So what is the rate law? The rate law here is rate equals k to the power times ClO2 to the power of 2 times OH to the power of 1. Oh, and then we didn't actually answer this question. The overall overall uh, order of the rate is 3. All right, determine the specific rate constant. This is just a plug and play. Pick any row and plug it in. I try to pick the ones with the lowest numbers just for fun. So I'm going to pick my rate. My rate is 0 0.46 is equal to k times 0 0.1 to the power of 2 times 0 0.2 to the power of 1. So do some multiplication there. I've got a square and I've got some other stuff. Let's just get my calculator out. Uh, now, I haven't thought about that, but what to do about photo math on the exam? That seems like... I will have to just choose. I'm going to try to choose questions that you will just be able to do without uh, too much complicated math work. And so that's going to be K equals 230. All right. Sketch the potential energy diagram for the endothermic reaction 2A plus B equal B to, to C, label both axes. Okay, it looks, like we, it looks like we just want to sketch it, so I feel like there was a better way this was done, but that's okay. Uh, we've done other ones with actual numbers in our class, but let's just follow this. So it says sketch potential energy diagram for this endothermic reaction, so that means it must go, it must start here, and then it must absorb energy. Down here we have 2a plus b. Up here we have c. I'm going to assume this is an arrow. Indicate the activation energy and delta h of this reaction. So this is going to be our activation energy. So this is our ea activation energy. Our delta h is going to be this value here. The difference between uh, a the potential energy of 
and this is going to be about potential energy. This is our reaction coordinate. That's what it means by sketch. Okay, using a dotted line, sketch the, sketch the effect of a catalyst on your potential energy diagram. So sketching a catalyst means that we are probably going to be reducing the activation energy, although the delta H stays the same. A dot B is the symbol for the transitional or intermediate species. Place it on the graph where you would find it. So that would be the transitional species, the one that is equally able to convert into the product or the reactant. So we place that up there. All right, all done. Oh boy, this one did not come out nice. Uh, I apologize for this transfer. Hopefully it printed nicely for you. So describe the changes that occur after each stress is applied to the equilibrium. So, uh, and I'm supposed to be looking for the, this, uh, these are the first three, and then it's going, is it shifting left or right? And let's see. Okay, so if you increase the amount of N2, then the uh, the result will be that H2 is going to go down and NH3 will go up. Because this is an NH3. There's a weird conversion that happened here as I transferred it from data. And so the shift is to the right. Okay. If H2 is increased, then we're going to have to decrease the amount of N2 because H2 has to be consumed. And uh, and then the amount of NH3 is going to increase, and it's still to the right. I'm just going to make some lines here. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, okay. I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup here just so I can read this. It's getting it looks just a little bit too messy for my liking, so I'm just going to do some some tidying. Okay. Ba -ba 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 -ba. It's really exciting for everybody. I'm sure you're just thrilled to watch at home as I clean up this page. But hopefully it'll make it legible at least. Okay. So, and then I'm gonna just uh, put some quick lines down. Something like this. duplicate that that's actually fine okay uh, well uh, it's not perfect but it's okay okay um, so okay so we're going to NH2 N2 is increased so the result is the H2 will have to go down NH3 will come up that's right uh, if H2 is increased, then we're going to start consuming N2 in a faster reaction rate because the forward reaction rate is increased, and that's right. If NH3 is increased, then we're going to respond by consuming that NH3, which is going to end up producing more H2 and N2 from the original equilibrium position, so it's going to the left. Now, if the temperature is increased, temperature increasing is like uh, is like adding more energy, right? Ooh, I could have left that. So it's like adding more energy. So if you add more energy, it will shift to the left again. So that's left. And that means we're going to get more reactants. If the amount of N2 is decreased, so if you could find some way to suck out N2, then the, uh, you're going to actually end up reducing the amount of ammonia in the solution, and you're going to increase the amount of H2 in response. So that will be considered left as well. If you decrease the H2, then of course you're going to do the opposite to the other thing, left. If you decrease the amount of NH2, NH3, then you are actually going to drag the equilibrium to fill in that gap, so that means that you are going to uh, use up more of that N2 and H2, and that's going to be to the right. This is actually one of the ways that you get around the Haber process, and is that you can filter out the ammonia as it's being made and pull the reaction forward. Decrease in the temperature is a similar effect. You are going to increase the amount of 
uh, of NH3 because you're going to be pulling that reaction forward and that means you're consuming. So you do want to run this reaction at a uh, low temperature if you can and there's no effect of course from a catalyst. Okay, that's that one. So we are we're only on page 4 out of 10. Wow, these are going to be some long videos. Okay, at equilibrium, a flask contains blah 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 blah. Uh it's a 2 liter flask. Boy, was I ever mean in these years. Uh, so a 2 liter flask means that actually the molarities are going to all be halved. Uh, so remember, you do have to convert to two by dividing by two liters on all of these. Uh, so this is a very a little bit of a trickier question. Um, so I would divide by two liters. That's going to give me uh, zero point zero seventy five. Half of seventy five is thirty five and thirty seven five. Okay, and then uh, half of 0 0.0205 is 0 0.025 and then 0 0.375 and 0 0.250 okay and these are molarities molarities molarity molarity okay calculate the kq for this reaction okay so this is a actually a fairly straightforward question they want kq and the equilibrium expression is simply to put the products HCl and POCl3 raised to their uh, coefficients and PCl5. Uh, oh, look at this. There's a solid over here. And then the other one is a gas. So this is H2O as a gas. That means that its concentration is uh, is not constant so we are going to but we can remove the solid remember that we do not include solids in equilibrium and we do not include pure liquids because if it's a pure liquid we're assuming that is the dominant species in the solution and its concentration is much much higher than anything else so all we need is three of these numbers then uh, so this is a tricky question i think it's uh, testing a few too many diff different things but we're asking for the student to enter 375 molar raised to the power of 2 times 0 0.250 molar molarity. I guess I didn't put it for the first one, so I won't put it there. And then divided by the concentration of water gas. I think there's a little bit of a gotcha there where somebody might not put in the water. And then uh, because they know that water should normally not be included, but this is gas water, not water water. And then we have to calculate. And I don't know, I don't even know if this calculator is going to be good enough to do this. 375 raised to the power of 2 times 0.25, uh, right? Yeah, divided by 0 0.025. And we get 1.41. One. Okay. We did have three significant figures, so we can leave it three significant figures. So that's the KQ constant. Okay. So then they give us another question. They have uh, KQ is this much for this reaction. Uh, okay. Ooh, look at that. Lower case, lowercase phase symbols. Uh, if three moles of HI are placed in a 5-liter vessel and allowed to reach equilibrium, what is the equilibrium concentration of H2? So this is an ice chart, technically, but uh, it's one of the simpler ones. You have H2 and I2. You do not know how much. You had 0 to start. And we have 3 moles in 5 liters, so that's 3 moles in 5 liters, so 0.6 concentration. Molarity, so that's 3 moles divided by 5 liters, gives me 0 0.6 molar. All right, so it's allowed to reach equilibrium, which means that some of this, some amount, we don't know how much, but 2x worth of it is going to be lost, and x is going to be gained, and the result is going to be 0 0.6 minus 2x, uh, and x and x. 
The KQ is pretty small, so we might expect that uh, we could even ignore it, but it's not tiny, tiny. Um, so, hmm, there's a couple options here to move forward. I would suggest uh, if we had photo math, we could, that, that would certainly be the best option in this case. Hmm. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's set up our KQ. Uh, we're going to go I2 and H2. I don't know why I did them backwards. HI to the power of 2. Okay. So there is a way to, to punch through in terms of calculation. Uh, I think actually, you know what I would be happy with is even uh, to just have, a, have somebody set this up and stop stop at the setup. I think that we actually have enough done at this point. So once you set this up, I think everything else is sort of, you know, just a practice in, in pain, in math. Um, okay, so once you're set up here, you can use this to, to solve for x. And then, so I'm just gonna write solve for x. There, done. Um, I, I mean, uh, yeah, I guess we could solve it, but it's, uh, it just seems like we're going to do a lot more work. Uh, okay. So this is just the bonus stuff. Uh, this is fine. I think that's good. hundred percent. Um, you got there, you applied the equilibrium value correctly. The rest of this is just math. If you, uh, can't leave a question half finished, uh, then I would suggest that you're going to have a lot of trouble in the in a calculus course because that's what we did in university calculus is le leave a lot of questions as at the limit of your ability uh, in the course to do it. But um, we can treat this as x squared over 0 0.6 minus 2x squared, which means you could take the whole square root of both sides. So we can take the square root of 0 0.0183. That gives us a value. 0 0.135. Another option, of course, is to use a calculator software like uh, PhotoMath or something. And this is x, and this is 0 0.6 minus 2x. And then we just really just have to keep keep mathing along, math, 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 until we get to the answer here. Um, there's some multiplication stuff. I, I don't want to do that in this video. I will include the final product in the, uh, in the uploaded PDF, but um, so I'll just give myself a scan, a, a, a cover here to remind myself. Okay, let's uh, see if this next question is a little bit more simple or, um, yeah, I like this question. Okay, so this is, uh, this is a question about uh, Q. If at a certain time, uh, blah, 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 is the reaction at equilibrium? So they're asking about Q. So let's do a Q test. A Q test means that we will put the product, CO2 and H2, divided by the reactants, H2O and CO2, but they are gas forms, so all of them are included. Divide them and check to see if it's bigger or smaller than K. So I've got uh, 0 0.5 times 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.8 and 0 0.050. This is a question that's worth carrying through because the number does tell us something. Uh, so let's do that. 0 0.8, whoops, uh, 0.5 times 0.4 divided by, don't forget your brackets, 8 times 0 0.05, close your brackets, and we get 5. Okay, that's a nice number. 5, so Q equals 5, KEQ equals 10, so Q is less than K. So now we have to remember which way is equilibrium going to shift. Well, it needs to shift so that the, the numerator is higher than the denominator. So in order to shift for the numerator to be higher than the denominator, I need more product. So shifts to right, more product. Okay.
Are we almost done equilibrium? There's a, uh, at least there's a blank page there. Okay, we'll take a break after this equ this last equilibrium question. Consider the following equilibrium. Two moles are placed in one liter flask and allowed to react at equilibrium. 1.8 moles of NO2 are present. Okay, I like this question as well. This is, a, this is the kind of question that I approve. I really quite like, I think four and five are ideal questions. Question three, uh, a little too much math for a final exam, On to be honest. Um, I would have to think about a better way to put this one in if I really wanted to put it in. I think it's just too much. I think we should just stick with four and five. They get the point across. Uh, they have you set up the right, the right system. So if you're uh, listening to this, uh, there's your clue. Maybe I'll listen to this back and remind myself that this is what I should do. Okay, so we have 2NO2, and it's being shifted back to N2O4. And we have 2 moles of N2O2, so that's 2 molarity with, at the start with 0. And then at equilibrium down here, ICE. So we're going to definitely lose 2x, and we're going to gain 1x worth of stuff. And it tells you how much stuff you have. So at equilibrium, you have 1.80 molarity. I really like this kind of question. The math is very simple. You can see that 2 molar minus some amount, 2x's, has, given, has left you with 1.80 moles. So how much did you lose? You lost 0.2. And so that means that 2x must be... 2 must, x must be equal to 0.2. That means that x is equal to 0 0.1. Go in, drop that in. This is minus 2 times 0 0.1. And that means that this is plus 0 0.1. So you're going to have 0 0.1 molar. So your k is going to be equal to N2O4 divided by NO2 to the power of 2. So that means I'm going to do 0 0.1 divided by 1.8 to the power of 2. That's I can do in my calculator. 1 divided by 1.8 squared. And I get an, a K of 0 0.03. Uh, I have three significant figures here. So I'm going to go 0 0.03 Zero, 0.09 so I'm not going to be a stickler about significant figures but you should try at least to be approximately in the right area don't just give me one significant figure if I gave you all these numbers with lots of decimal places all right let's take a break and come back for solubility in a minute